Hey, what's up guys? Yesterday, Paul and I took a look at this 2012 Volkswagen Jetta. The issue with the vehicle is that it wouldn't come out of park and we did not have any communication with the TCM. Basically, what we looked at were some CAN signals going to the TCM. I had previously checked the powers and grounds. And where we were at with the vehicle, we determined that it had a faulty TCM Using the manufacturer's flow chart, um, what it had us do was unplug the TCM and do a resistance check of the entire CAN bus network. The spec was 60 to 70 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius. I believe our, we were within spec. It was, I don't know, maybe 63, 60. It was within, it was within spec. One check that we did not do was do a resistance check with the TCM plugged in from a different location of the CAN bus network. The way that it affected our CAN signals, there should be a big difference with this resistance check that we do with the TCM connected compared to it disconnected. So that's what I want to do. I want to do a resistance check at a different location with the TCM plugged in and with it unplugged. So right here there is a two pin connector. One side goes to the electromechanical power steering. The other side would go to the gateway or be a, a part of the CAN bus network. So this is where I'm going to do my resistance check with it plugged in and with it unplugged. TCM is plugged in and we are reading 61 point six seven ohms which is within spec manufacturer's flowchart stated sixty to seventy ohms so I'm gonna unplug this so now the TCM is disconnected we're looking at maybe a one ohm difference so not much change with uh, our resistance check we go to from maybe 61, 62 ohms to 63. Um, I was expecting more of a significant difference, whether it be high or low. Judging by the way that the TCM was affecting the communication swear waves, they were not mirrored, very uneven. Um, some of them were, were cut. There was just a lot of hash in there that shouldn't have been. This resistance check, uh, I was really counting on it to maybe confirm it a little bit more that we needed the TCM. Um, this TCM is about a thousand dollars. So this is not a call you want to guess at. I mean, I don't really think that there's enough checks that we could do to condemn this TCM. This resistance check, um, I wanted to be sure like I said, $1,000 TCM. This made me go back and recheck powers and grounds to my module. I wanted to make sure that everything was there and there was one thing I missed. So let me show that to you on the wiring diagram. On my original power and ground checks, there was one fuse that I seen that powered up this module and I believe it was this SC14 and I just wanted to make sure that that was there it was there I had power on the fuse and I had power at the module and then grounds. Here, are my grounds. here are my two grounds they are grounded 655 which is connection on the left headlight those grounds were good so I had one power and two grounds powers and grounds are good we moved on to, or I moved on to, the CAN signals. That is when we found that distortion. So I was looking back over the wiring diagram, and I noticed these 15s right here. That 15 is terminal 15, which is your key on ignition power. And what you want to do is you follow these up, these track numbers, 15 and 31 and then the track numbers are on the bottom of the page. So now we want 15 and 31. So here's 31 that goes to F125 
which is our multi-function range switch was one of our issues wouldn't come out of park the next one is 15 what does that go to it goes up to a fuse is it SC30 I didn't check that fuse I thought I only had one power feed two grounds I missed a power feed alright guys so this um, power feed that I missed is actually pin 27 and 28 on the TCM I need to own it this is a thousand dollar module that we we're about to put in this car this resistance check I was expecting to see a big difference didn't see it now I'm questioning did I miss something I did I missed a main power feed that I didn't check so that's what we're about to do I'm gonna turn the key on and I'm expecting to see 12 volts on both of these wires two black with blue wires right here I'm just gonna back probe one nothing on that one back probe the other one they both share the same fuse nothing there's a main power feed that I missed so now what we need to do is go back to this fuse this SC30 fuse and make sure we have power there so this is our SC fuse box it's inside the driver's door there's a panel that you have to pop off that covers this and there are numbers inside this fuse right here this 20 amp fuse that is fuse 29 to the right of it is fuse SC30 what do we see there's no fuse there somebody was in here I'm willing to bet that this SC29 where this 20 amp fuse if we pull that fuse out there's probably no terminal in there you can see the one with the terminal on the bottom is our SC30 right next to it is 29 somebody put this fuse in the wrong location so I'm going to put our fuse in the SC30 spot we're gonna redo our checks so move the fuse over to the SC30 spot let's go out to the module recheck our powers so I have a maintainer on this right now back to our power feed 13 volts on that one 13 volts on that one we now have power where we didn't before can never be too sure when you're calling a module recheck your work let's see if we have communication with this thing we'll just do a code scan see if it detects the TCM it already did TCM, no codes. So systems detected 14. I um, don't remember what we had before. It was 12 or 13. And we do. So what did we learn here? Pretty important to have all your powers and grounds and how it affects this CAN network. Um, I'm going to get you a shot of the CAN signals now before they were really distorted. There was a huge difference with the TCM disconnected compared to when it was connected and we showed that. This just goes to show maybe double checking your work isn't a bad thing um, the more checks that you can have on a system like this I don't think you can have you can never have too many checks when it comes to something like this we expected to see a big difference with the TCM plugged in compared to when it was disconnected there was no difference that made me question do we have an issue with this TCM the distortion in the CAN signals showed that it was from the TCM but 
Powers and grounds, pretty important. Let's get a shot of our communication lines. So I'm now hooked up to our can high and can low. TCM is connected. Those square waves look a ton better. That's what a can network waveform should look like. They're mirroring each other. So on our channel A, we have let's see, a resting voltage of let's see, our cursor two would be two and a half volts. And we have a peak amplitude of 3.6 volts. That is normal. Um, on our green trace, we have a resting voltage at two and a half volts, and the peak would be 1.3 volts, and that I believe is normal. Normal for these three and a half uh, dominant voltage on the can high and the can low would be 1.5 volts for the dominant voltage. So that those amplitudes look good. We they are mirroring each other and we don't have any distortion like we had before. So the main issue before, customer stated, vehicle would not come out of park. So we now have communication with the TCM. It now comes out of park. So this would be a definite fix. Not replacing the TCM. So what was key here? I think powers and grounds. Um, the resistance check of the entire network, 60 ohms. If you do have a faulty module, I do believe it's going to affect that resistance of the network. So like we did now, doing a separate or doing another resistance check at a different module or a different connection in the network while leaving the suspect module plugged in and checking your network resistance again. We had a one ohm difference, if that, maybe two tops. Not significant enough or not what we wanted to see. We were expecting a, a big difference, whether it be high or low. Which led us to recheck the powers and grounds. I missed the main power feed. I need to own that. It's a thousand dollar module I would have been putting in this car and it wouldn't have fixed it. And then I would have been smacking myself for a misplaced fuse. Somebody was in there and didn't put the fuse back where it needed to be. Definitely learned a lot on CAN networks here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. I hope this is good enough for you, Scanner Tanner. So I'm sitting here editing this final part and I want to talk to Tommy first. Nice job Tommy on owning that mistake on that module. Um, you know I think one of the main things and the main reason you missed it those freaking wiring diagrams suck dude. I mean we ended up using a Mitchell diagram to get a better understanding of the network and figure out how the engine computer was or the uh, scan tool data link connector was wired into the gateway independent of the CAN system it was the Mitchell diagram that helped us and it was I bet you if you were looking at a Mitchell diagram Tommy you would not have missed it um, so you missed a power feed no big deal uh, some questions we all still have with which one of them is why is a missing power feed affecting that CAN network that way um, I don't know enough about the ins and outs, the, the component level pieces of a CAN network uh, to answer that question. Number two would be the resistance check that we did, and, and Tommy was mentioning that uh, a few times in there about how we expected to see a resistance difference. Uh, when Tommy and I left that day, or some of the things we were talking about before I left when we filmed that was if that transmission control module is affecting the network to a point where it's changing the signals like we saw 
we expected to see a resistance difference. Uh, we did not. We just saw about a 2 ohm difference when he unplugged it and plugged it back in. So I don't know that we can use that resistance measurement as a 100% foolproof guide. Uh, that's what Tommy and I were trying to do in that test and, and why we wanted to check the resistance of the network with the TCM plugged in. Um, I'm glad that we talked about doing that because that's what led Tommy to recheck his powers and grounds and realized his mistake. So missing power feed. And, you know, by the way, the customer brought this car in. It was towed in. Somebody moved that fuse. Who moved the fuse? Why did they move the fuse? Stuff we don't know. Um, another piece that maybe you know Tommy can jump in here and answer. Uh, you had mentioned Tom that the um, fuse that was missing also went to something with the shifter. So I'm wondering if maybe it wasn't so much the TCM not being powered up as far as the shift interlock went, as it as much as it was we were missing a power feed to maybe a shift interlock solenoid or something like that I'm not sure I didn't look at the diagram again Tommy you can jump in and answer that question on this video underneath in the comments section so again the resistance measurements that we did not sure about that being a hundred percent foolproof test but we were we were just looking for another piece another guide that said faulty TCM. We, we didn't feel comfortable with the flow chart and what we had. I mean, do you ever? And you know, Tommy made that point a few times. We can never have enough checks when it comes to diagnosing a faulty module. There is never one check you can do that says, hey, I'm bad. And we always are questioning, what did we miss? What did we miss? What did I do wrong? What can I recheck? That's the thought process we go through when it comes to a faulty module, especially one that cost a thousand dollars. But more CAN network videos coming up. I have a uh, Ford Taurus that has a network issue that is an intermittent one and I'm trying to duplicate it. And I have some video footage of that. So you guys will be seeing that soon. Final thing guys, one more time, look up my buddy, Tommy Wolf, Positive Lead Diagnostics. Second thing, Scanner Danner Premium, we'll put that one right there click on that link that is my paid channel to my college level auto diagnostic training class it is recorded at Rosedale Technical College you guys can be part of that online there is a 14 day free trial so check that out too thanks guys we'll see you next time